Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today is an episode that I really didn't want to do, um, but uh, it needs to be done. We got to start talking about this. Uh, Jamie and Brent from PFI Speed just posted a video on this. And ironically, they got their fine last week, and I just got mine uh, yesterday. So uh, basically, um, same situation that they're in. Uh, we were selling devices that were able to defeat emissions and uh we were installing them and um they uh government didn't like that and they hit us and we've been dealing with this for over a year now uh got a letter just like what they got stating all the good stuff in it uh what our fine's going to be this and that and um so far um right now our fine's about twenty two thousand dollars i think it's twenty twenty one thousand twenty two thousand one hundred dollars i believe is what it is came down from 180,000 180 and some change to 22,000 is what they want to settle for. Um, yeah, that's a big jump down, but um, at the same time, it hurts. This is a big thing and uh, definitely not something everybody's prepared for. Um, so we're gonna do the best we can and we'll just kind of see what we can do. Behind me, my video today is not really about the fine, the letter, you guys know all about that. They're going through the same thing. Um, if not, go over to PFI Speed, check out Jamie and Brent's video on theirs. There are a couple recent videos on it and um, they'll kind of explain what they were going through. but. This is more or less, um, we gotta support the RPM Act. We gotta get that going. Sign it, RPM Act, I'll throw a link up there and uh, hopefully you guys can sign that and, and hopefully understand what they're trying to do. This is not just like, okay, we're ripping emission systems off and trucks are driving down the road blowing black smoke on people. It's not what we're about. The diesel uh, industry has come a long way uh, since that was kind of a thing now we try our best to tune the smoke out of it, uh, make the trucks more efficient. And then on top of this, this is actually taking away vehicles that we wanna use for competition. So if I go buy a truck that's a 2006 F-250 and I wanna make it a competition truck, because that truck has had a VIN number, it is exempt from, I'm sorry, because that truck has had a VIN number, um, I still am not able to modify that. I'm not able to modify, if I go buy a 2010 Camaro and I wanna throw turbos out of the hood, technically the government can tell me that's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to buy parts for that. You're not allowed to sell parts for that. Even if I never drive it on the street again and it's a race car from here on out, I'm still not allowed to do that. So that's where we're, what we're fighting here is, um, you know, I got guys that have farm trucks, that ranch trucks, mud trucks, things that will never, ever, ever be on the street again. And unfortunately, because they had a VIN number at one time, the government's telling me, sorry, you have to leave everything on there and keep everything. So mainly this video today, I wanna to show you guys, and we're gonna talk a lot about numbers and why I think that the government is, I don't think it's right, um, because I'll explain a few things to you on uh, what really I think is a lot bigger issue than our automotive performance automotive industry. Um, and you know, you guys tell me what you think. Behind me, I've got a few things that we're gonna go over. I'm gonna set the phone up so I can talk and be hands-on with this stuff, and you guys see what's going on. But um, that's kind of what this video is more about. You guys know about this stuff. You know what's going on there. We need to sign the RPM Act. We know all that. I'm gonna give my opinion on a diesel particulate filter, EGR system, diesel exhaust fluid, all this stuff that we have to add on these trucks now. So bear with me. Let me set this camera up and uh, explain to you guys what I think. All right. So what I'm gonna go over today, sitting behind me, I've got a jug of diesel exhaust fluid, brand new in the box. I've also got an EGR cooler off of, I believe this is off of like a 2006, 2007 Duramax. And I've got a diesel particulate filter off of a 2017 F-250. Um, this one actually, particular one failed at about 70,000 miles and the dealership refused to warranty it. So we had to buy him another one. Uh, this EGR is just cooler. I've had this thing sitting around forever. I couldn't even tell you, and obviously this is cool. First of all, we're gonna to get to the diesel exhaust fluid. Here's how you buy your diesel exhaust fluid nowadays. Well, nowadays, like, because that's what we have to buy. You get it in a cardboard box. You can get it at your local gas station, Walmart, anywhere, just about everywhere carries it now. First thing you'll notice, you open the cardboard box, there's usually a piece of paper in there, like an advertisement or something. Um, then you got this. Here's your straw to put the diesel exhaust fluid on this plastic cap here. And it's a plastic straw in a plastic bag. 
Super great for the environment, by the way, along with this nice cardboard box. Let's just throw that out there. This is where we've gone now is to add all this stuff. Now, keep in mind, before we had exhaust fluid, this was all non-existent. Um, I'm sure that, you know, uh, whoever makes this peak or whoever is making the killing off it, but that's good for them. So uh, we have exhaust fluid, open the box, plastic bag, plastic straw. Then take it out of this cardboard box, and we got this nice plastic jug with a plastic lid with a label on the side of this fluid that is not good for you. I've had exhaust fluid on me before. I've actually laid in a puddle of it on accident, working on a truck, pulled a line off, put a puddle on the ground. My back was burning for like three hours. Um, this fluid is not good for you. It has all kinds of warning labels on it. It's acidic, it's poisonous, all this stuff. You, you know, it, it's terrible for you. So this here, my truck, I have a 2020 GMC, and I go through about five gallons every two to 3,000 miles. People will be like, oh no, it shouldn't go that short. No, when you're towing trailers, when you're using your truck for what they should be used for, it's going through anywhere from, you know, five gallons, two to 3,000 miles we have to put. This is a two and a half gallon jug. So every two to 3,000 miles, I buy two of these jugs for my truck and put them in. And uh, when you do it at a gas station, there's not always a place to recycle right there. Um, they have trash cans there. There's not recycled cans always at a gas station. So when you're on the road, you kind of just have to do what you got to do. Now we are producing these things now. There's a factory now that probably produces this jug. It produces this cardboard box. It produces this cap. We have a factory now running 24-7 to produce all these things that we didn't have before. So now what kind of emissions is that factory putting on? What kind of emissions? Now we have trucks, extra trucks that have to haul this to the places so they can deliver this to the, the, the product, to the consumer or end user, whoever. Now you have to fill up trucks, so now we're running more, burning more fuel. I, I, I'm not convinced, I just, I'm not convinced on that. How the extra things that we have to do to make this happen now makes just, all it does is make our tailpipes cleaner. Now, when a truck does a regen, it's funny how they tell you when you're doing an emissions test on it, you cannot test the emissions during regen. So when you're in a state, luckily Florida as of right now is not a state that requires you to get emissions testing. But when you go to an emissions testing state or emissions testing site, if your DPF is regenerating, you'll fail. Why is that? Because it's burning everything out of that exhaust. It's still burning. You can't barely stand next to it. They're just, they stink, it's disgusting, it's horrible for you. But that's, cleaner, right? Even though it still burns out the emissions. Um, that's pretty much on the exhaust fluid. So you have all this extra stuff. Now you have to manufacture an extra plastic tank on the side of the truck, a sending unit with full of plastic and have this fluid. All that stuff has to be done. An injector now goes in the exhaust. It's a lot more money, a lot more expensive, a lot more materials, way more difficult to make happen. So, which brings me to my next uh, piece of the system here, an EGR. EGR cooler. This is not an EGR valve, this is an EGR cooler. This cooler, it actually, the way the EGR system works, it's called exhaust gas recirculation, and it actually pulls exhaust gases when it comes out of your exhaust manifolds on a diesel, and most of our diesels, pretty much all of them are turbocharged nowadays. Before it gets to your turbocharger, it's gonna take some exhaust out of that, and it's going to basically run it through this cooler, cool it down, and there's a valve and it's gonna run through the intake of the engine. Okay, understandable. It seems like it would work, right? Well, here's what happens with an EGR system. Now you're blocking airflow, you're less airflow, and over time that EGR system is gonna plug up. What do you think happens when your EGR system plugs up? Your truck loses power, and your truck also loses economy. Now your fuel mileage has gone down more than what your fuel mileage has already gone down by making them have these to a particular filter EGR systems on the truck. So you've already lowered efficiency when you first buy it by putting all these on. Now, as the truck drives and put miles on it, your efficiency gets lower. It starts to get all that gunk built up in the intake. It basically packs it in there, packs your intake ports, packs your intake with intake of your, your cylinder heads, everything, your tubes, everything gets smaller, the truck's gonna become less efficient. You know what that means? We're gonna burn more fuel. How is that more efficient 
to run this, now we're burning more fuel. Inside this, and what I'm talking about here is, inside this right here, this right here has, um, sorry, wrong side. This right here is your side that goes in the intake. This is the valve bolt right here. That's how this works. Look at what is caked inside there. This one's been sitting for years. I have not messed with it. Most of this stuff's gone. This is like tar. This is actually inside your engine. Um, it's disgusting. It builds everything up and it takes the walls of everything. So, I mean, when you get this stuff on you, if you're ever working on a diesel, you'll know what I'm talking about. A lot of guys that work or that uh, follow my channel have worked on a diesel, have messed with them. Some of you haven't. Well, that's what we have to deal with. We're not allowed to remove that. That's part of the emission system. So, now we get into the big guy here, the diesel particulate filter. Every single truck, 2007 and later, uh, has to have a diesel particulate filter built into it. The exhaust fluid came in like 2011 on the GMs, 2012 on the Dodges, I believe, 2011, anything basically 2011 after. Medium duty trucks and heavy duty trucks had to do this stuff before this. They were already doing it. Um, but 07 was the year of the DPF. You see this thing, it's massive. This used to be a pipe, three to four, three and a half inches in diameter, and it would have a catalytic converter in it, and that was it, it had a muffler, and you were done. Now you have this massive thing sitting underneath your truck, more weight for the vehicle, all these um, uh, metals on this thing, this is stainless, there's palladium, platinum in there, everything, and, and, and I'm gonna get back to this in a minute, but just so you know, like an EGR system, it's funny how this thing here is imported in most likely. I don't think we're making this in the United States. I don't think we're building DPFs in the United States. This right here says right on it, Tokyo Radiator is what's on this EGR cooler. Just so you guys have an idea of where this EGR cooler came from. So now we're importing goods. Then instead of making them here in the United States, we're importing this stuff. This stuff's not all made in the United States. Um, this actually says, Made in USA of domestic and foreign content. That's what the diesel exhaust fluid says. Cool, guys. So you guys basically bring it here and you make it. But everything comes from out of the country. So back to the diesel particulate filter. The way this works is, is it packs soot in the exhaust. And it's supposed to reduce your NOx and CO2 emissions so that it doesn't hurt our atmosphere or environment. But as I said earlier, when a truck goes through a regeneration... Why can you not stand behind that truck? Because it's burning all this nasty stuff off of it and you can't barely stand it. It's building a lot of heat. Terrible for the environment. The metal in this, palladium, platinum, um, precious metals are what these are made out of. Precious metals that we're having to mine out of the earth. So keep that in mind. Now we're taking, have you ever seen a mine? Um, what they do to the earth in a mine? It's terrible for our, terrible for the land, anything that's around, um, it's terrible. I did a little bit of research on this and they don't have emissions in South Africa. And the reason I say South Africa is because 95% uh, of the platinum in the world comes from South Africa in the mine. I don't know if you guys have seen movies about it. Um, you know, there's a lot of movies out there about it that talk about it and how bad it is over there on some stuff. 95% of this is mined over there. We have 5% is mined elsewhere. That's it. So 95% of our platinum palladium is all coming out of South Africa. How do you think that gets over here? It's gonna come on a ship. It's gonna come on a big container ship, bring it over here, and that's how they get it over here to where we're at in the United States. Um, Cause I highly doubt that the 5% they are, you know, um, they're using that from the United States cause we like to import everything in the United States. Sex for some, except for some companies because, you know, they stand behind us and everything else. So I did a little bit of research. Um, I want to know, okay, like, you know, so people knew what this stuff costs. For a 2017 Ford F-250, I priced out a 2017 F-250, a 2017 GM 2500, and a 2017 Dodge 2500. I priced out a diesel particulate filter, priced out an EGR valve, and an EGR cooler. The Ford came in at $4,500 worth of parts for just those three things. That's no sensors, that's no brackets, that's no modules, that's nothing that is literally just the diesel particulate filter, 
That is the EGR valve and the EGR cooler. Um, and I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're massive. They take huge material on the 6.7 Fords. The Duramax, 2017 Duramax, $5,000. Now, this is just parts, guys. This is no labor. So your everyday guy in his driveway, if he's able to do it, cool. For the most part, though, you need a scanner and you got to be able to work on this. So these are no laborers. $4,500 for the Ford, $5,000 for the GM, for an EGR cooler, an EGR valve, a DPF, and a catalytic converter because GM actually puts their catalytic converter separately from the diesel particulate filter. Now we go over the Dodge. 2017 Dodge. And the reason I use these 2017s are most of these trucks are going on five years. Most you're going to get out of a warranty of these guys is five year, 100,000 powertrain. A lot of emissions warranties are only 60,000. So at 60,000 miles, that's over with. Um, the Dodge, for an EGR cooler, a diesel particulate filter, an EGR valve, and a catalytic converter, $8,220 just for parts. No labor, not a single drop of labor in there. That's only parts. So that just kind of shows you what it costs to maintain this stuff if it does fail, if it does plug up. I'd have no problem. If you want to give me a lifetime warranty because I have to run this stuff on my vehicle, cool. Do you guys want to back that for me? The government wants to back that to make that mandated, hey, we're going to pay for this stuff if it breaks. Hey, I'll run it all day long. But when it falls on the consumer, I need a truck. I tow a 40-foot trailer, sometimes the 53-foot wedge or 50-foot wedge, whatever. I mean, we tow big trailers. A gas truck's just not going to cut it and be able to keep up with traffic. Um, so that's kind of where I get angry at is the cost of all this stuff for the normal consumer. All be, And we're forced to keep it. Um, I, I, I don't agree with it. I don't see how this, because keep in mind, we have all these factories and all these people now and all this transportation trying to get this to you. Factories, transportation, import. Factories, transportation, import, mining. All this stuff now has to be done to get these materials. And you're gonna tell me that's better for, your, for, for us as human beings later on in the future to have these massive factories and buildings and extra trucks running and all this stuff. And not to mention the fuel economy of the vehicles go down. The fuel economy in a vehicle drops anywhere from 25 to 30% by adding all this stuff, if not more. So, and then throughout its life, as this stuff starts to wear and get plugged up, the economy goes down. So now these vehicles are burning more fuel. You used to be able to buy a truck and it would get you know, 16, 18 miles per gallon in a diesel truck back in 2006, 2007. Stop. They came out with diesel particular filters in 07. 07 and a half technically was when they came out. Dude, they were dropping to 12, 13 miles to the gallon just like that with the same everything, same setup. So I, I, I can't be convinced. And also keep in mind too, the United States military is all exempt from emissions. Why is that? Why would they be exempt from emissions? They're that good for the environment. We have hundreds of thousands of their vehicles out there. Why are they exempt from having emissions on the vehicles? Because they're unreliable, is that why? Harder to work on? Makes no sense. Gail Banks just built, I don't know, a ton of engines, L5P engines, and they have no emissions on them for the military. How, why is that? And he's big in supporting this emissions friendly stuff, all this stuff, he wants it. But why would you build that for the military? If you're all about emissions, why'd you build that for the military? Now keep in mind when I talk about the container ships that come over here and bring a lot of these products over, materials over. Did some research on the ships. Just kind of curious. How much does a ship, container ship, burn diesel fuel? How much emissions does that put off? What does that kill? What does that do? Well, it turns out your container ship Anything ship-wise does not require emissions. So cruise ships, container ships, no emissions required. There's a few of those big, massive mega ships, they call them. They are like, you know, a thousand feet long and this and that, or, or 600 feet long, I don't know. Did a little bit of research on them. There's 5,222 container ships registered in 2018. I only could assume that number's gone up. 5,300, let's say 5,400. Let's say we got 5,000 of those. 15 of those largest ships, just 15 of them, make up, they run 24 seven, make up more emissions 
or equal amount of emissions as every single automobile in the, in the world, sorry, not in the United States, in the world. 15 out of those 5,000 ships make up just as many, if not more, emissions than, than automobiles in the entire world, trucks, cars, everything. Then you have cruise ships. Cruise ships, there's 315 cruise ships worldwide. They emit the same emissions, the 315 ships emit the same emissions as one million cars running steadily. So you're telling me that we wanna hit your race car guys, which we make a fraction. We make probably a 10th of a percent of the emissions out there. The guys that wanna take their cars to the track, take their trucks to the track, run their trucks, any of them. They're gonna hit us, we're a, a fraction. And that's just some of the research I did during the day. I didn't even get into aviation. I could only imagine. I started doing a little bit of research on aviation. Very tough to find emissions and stuff like that because they don't have to run emissions on a, emissions laws on aviation. They don't run them on cruise ships. They don't run them on container ships. None of that stuff has to have emissions. Why is that? When they are burning millions and millions and millions of gallons of fuel, far more than what we burn, more unrefined too in the cruise ships and things like that. They're more unrefined in container ships and cruise ships because they can burn, uh, they do not have to have the fuel as, as refined as in a pickup truck. So this is where I'm at on it. That's where I'm like, why are we getting hit? Where, I, I don't understand how. Um, just my opinion on it. You guys know this stuff, you've seen it before and you know, we're stuck dealing with it as far as the fines and stuff like that. We did it, whatever. We're going to have to pay these fines somehow. But why are they messing with us? When, like I said there, just a little bit of research. I know, I, I, I'm not I'm not the smartest guy in the world, for sure, at all. Um, but it's just common sense that this plugs your engine up, causes less economy. This is taking what to make all of this stuff, to, to make all this stuff, all to make your tailpipe a little bit less pollutant. But in reality, the amount of fuel you're burning and the amount of trucks that are having to run and equipment's having to run and get this stuff to you, um, it really makes no sense. I really want you guys' feedback on it. I'd love to have everybody's feedback on this. Everybody in the automotive industry, please share this video. Um, I, I mainly kind of talked about the diesel side of this. That's kind of what I want to talk about. A lot of the guys are dealing with the race car stuff and which is all, we're all in this together. Anybody that has a vehicle is in this. If you ever want to do anything right now, it's right now. It's, we don't want you doing an exhaust on your vehicle. What's next? We don't want you putting wheels and tires on your vehicle because it's unsafe. We don't want you putting a small lift kit on your vehicle because it's unsafe. We don't want you painting your vehicle because the color could be too bright and we, uh, we can't have that on the road. What is next? What's coming? So, Again, guys, thank you very much for watching this. If you stayed till the end, we really appreciate it. Uh, I'm trying to get this out there as much as I can, and I really want all your feedback. Put me in touch with people. If I'm wrong, prove me I'm wrong. I, I could be wrong on this. I'm just going off what I think and how I feel on it. This is very frustrating. It's, you know, it sucks for everybody in this industry or anybody that has a passion for cars, because that future, your kids, people that are gonna wanna do things that you did when you were kids if you're older, things like that. Our kids aren't going to be able to do that. So again, guys, thank you again. Thank you for watching the Jay Cecil channel. And uh, we're going to fight this together. Hopefully everybody can understand that. And uh, we'll see you next time.